Today, I wanna to tackle a really important conversation, self-advocacy and your role in trying to help you live your best life despite having MS. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. This video is actually the second in a video series on my plan for being five for five in your fight against MS. Being five for five is something I've developed and essentially cultivated with my patients in MS clinic over the last near 17 years of clinical practice. And I'm really excited to share it with you. In the first video in this series, we really focused our discussion on goal setting both long-term life goal setting and also MS goal setting. So if you missed that, I'll throw a card right here so you can check it out. In this video, we're discussing how to operationalize those goals, literally how we put them into clinical practice. So let's jump in. Now, when I talk about operationalizing our MS goals, I'm talking about the things that we do in clinic to help you live your best life. And I divide MS care at this point into three parallel paths. We do all three at the same time. The first one is addressing an MS attack. So an attack, a flare, an exacerbation, a relapse, it's all the same thing. It's when something bad happens to you neurologically and a day or two later it's sticking around and you have to come clean with your family that you can't feel your arm, God forbid, or can't see out of your eye, God forbid. An MS attack is caused because of inflammatory naughty autoreactive cells which are in the bloodstream they cross the blood-brain barrier into the central compartment where they see the brain and spinal cord and attack it, thinking they're attacking a bad guy in short-circuiting a neurological function. Now, we don't know when attacks are going to occur, and we do things, which I'll get to later, to prevent them. But when an attack occurs, we need to be able to respond. And so, step one is to identify, hey, something's weird going on, and it's been going on for longer than a day, and so I need to give Dr. B a holler. Now, notice that I just said longer than a day. This is the 24-hour rule, and it's a very, very helpful rule that my mentor taught me years and years ago. If you have a new neurological symptom that lasts less than 24 hours, it's less likely to be a new MS thing. Why? Because MS attacks are caused by inflammation. So imagine that you socked me in my jaw, right? And my face got all puffy. Well, tomorrow it's more puffy because the inflammation in my face doesn't go away in an hour. It goes away after several days. Similarly, when there's a new MS attack causing a short circuit in the brain or spinal cord, it's caused by inflammation and those symptoms are gonna last longer than 24 hours. So if you wake up in the morning and your hand's numb and you shake it out and it feels better, you probably don't have to call your MS neurologist. However, if you wake up in the morning and your hand's numb and the next day it's more numb now, I think you need to give us a holler. When we identify a new neurological symptom that we're concerned could be an MS attack, we need to figure out, is it actually an MS attack or is it a pseudo attack? Now, pseudo is Greek for similar to, but it ain't. And if you have multiple sclerosis and you get an infection, even something silly like a urinary tract infection that you're not even aware of, it raises your core body temperature and you can literally short circuit old areas of damage. So if you have a re-emergence of numbness of your leg that you had a long time ago, we need to ferret out, is that a new thing or is it a pseudo attack caused by an infection? How do we do that? We check your urine, we make sure that you don't have an infection somewhere. And if we identify an infection, we treat that infection. It's always very interesting when you treat a urinary tract infection and the numbness in the leg goes away. Now, if we're unable to find an infection, then we're probably gonna conclude this is an MS attack and we'll discuss options for treatment. There's lots of different flavors of high dose steroids that can be given. There's different formulations orally that can be taken at home. There's IVs that can be administered at home or at an infusion center or in a clinic. And we can hasten the recovery of your MS attack and regain function by quelling that inflammation with high dose steroids. Before we move away from the discussion of attack management, we have to identify that if you're taking a medicine to slow down your MS and prevent attacks, and then you have an attack, well, that's not okay. That's like saying if you're on birth control and you get pregnant, well, gosh, it didn't work. And so the last thing that we have to do after we assess recovery from the attack, I like to bring my patients back into clinic a month after I treat them to assess, 
we also have to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about whether or not your disease-modifying therapy is doing a good job or not. And that might be an inflection point where we have to kick it to the curb and upgrade our treatment. So the first of three parallel paths to treat your MS is managing attacks. Real quick before we go on, do me a solid favor. If you like this video, would you give it a thumbs up, please? Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you really like this content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. The second parallel path that we'll take in helping you live your best life despite having MS is focusing on managing chronic symptoms. So symptoms are things that stink. Oftentimes you can have an MS attack and not fully recover and pick up a symptom. For example, a numb hand or a burning leg or some other type of neurological thing that impairs the quality of your life. So if I slow your MS down and you're miserable, I didn't do a good job and I don't wanna do a bad job. To do a good job, we need to slow the MS down, which we'll get to in a second, but we also need to improve the quality of your life. And I find the easiest way to do that is to tackle symptoms that stink. So as I work with people in clinic, increasingly over visit by visit, we spend more and more time tackling chronic symptoms. I oftentimes will think about what I refer to as the up there's. So the up there's is energy, mood, thinking, and memory. These are invisible symptoms. They're very, very commonly impacted in the setting of MS. And so I talk about them with every patient, every visit. And if you're having difficulty with cog fog, if you're having fatigue, or if you're suffering from significant anxiety and depression, those things will erode the quality of your life. And so we want to tackle them head on. On this channel, I have a bunch of videos about management of these symptoms. And so I'll throw a playlist up above either here or there, I guess it's here, and you can click it and check it out if you want. Another set of symptoms that I think must be addressed are the down there's. You know, the down there's, bowel, bladder, and bedroom. If you would like to improve the quality of someone's life, help them control their bowel and bladder and have meaningful interactions in the bedroom, and we're really, really doing well. My point here is, as things impair the quality of your life, I want you to bring them to your MS neurologist's attention and say, hey, I've got this thing going on. We can then game it out. I will probably present you with 15 different things we can do. I say, ooh, we could do this, 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 this. And then you'll say, no, no, you're a weirdo, never, maybe, yes. And we'll custom pick what we want to do to try to help improve the quality of your life. Let me give you a favorite example. Men, we like our erections. That's a fact. And some gentlemen with MS can develop erectile dysfunction. Now, if a gentleman with MS has erectile dysfunction and it bothers him, then I give him a little blue after dinner mint. I give him Viagra or Cialis or something to improve sex. If a gentleman with MS has erectile dysfunction and he doesn't care, then I don't care. Because in this example, treating erectile dysfunction does not slow down or speed up MS. It just makes Friday better. I ask him to bring me things that concern him, for example, erectile function, and then we'll game out how do we wanna to try to make that better. As we game out how to live your best life despite having MS, we have a path to manage attacks when they occur, and we have a path to manage chronic symptoms when they occur as well. There's a commonality that you as the human being, the you expert, know when things are going on, and I ask you to present them to me. Just bring them to our attention so that we can game out how to make them better. Now, the third parallel path is the most important, and this is disease modification, changing the natural history of MS. The word natural history is a doctor word, which means if I don't do anything to help you, what happens? And untreated MS, and for that matter, undertreated MS, is a nasty animal, and it's the leading cause of neurological disability amongst young people outside of trauma and we want to do things to change that natural history, to not allow you to let MS just run its course. And this is where being five for five in your fight against MS really comes into play. So there are five things that I think we need to be doing all the time to alter this disease process. And that is exactly what we'll be discussing in the next video in this series. So until then, or until the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.